Brothers and sisters in Christ, today we are called to reflect on a profound truth that we often forget or ignore there are souls that have never left us, that walk among us and ask for our prayers out of love. I am talking about the souls in purgatory who visited a simple woman of faith, Maria Simmer, this humble Austrian mystic born in 1915, dedicated her life to prayer and intercession for the souls of the deceased, receiving surprising visions and revelations. The souls in purgatory turned to her, asking for prayers to shorten their time of purification. Through her, we were made aware of truths that illuminate the mystery of life after death and the profound connection between us and those who preceded us. This story, so real and vivid, opens our eyes to an invisible but powerful reality. The way we here on earth can help these souls and how they from purgatory can intercede for us is explained to us with disarming simplicity and a love that only God can inspire. Before continuing, I want to invite you to watch the entire video, as within it there is a call for each one of us. Now, let's hear the words of Maria Simmer, extracted from the book, Get Us Out of Here. Is it considered a sin not to believe that the souls of those who have departed visit us? No, it is not a sin, but one should also not joke about these things. It is not an article of faith, and therefore not a sin. What do you think is the difference between those who feel the souls of purgatory near them and those who do not? I think those who are more sensitive and observant are more likely to notice them than others. Is there something we can do to perceive them more clearly? We need to pray a lot for them and keep ourselves as impeccable as possible. By this I mean remain in a state of grace, keeping our body as free as possible from everything that interferes wise. With our clarity, we need a healthy, balanced and moderate diet. And of course we should not use drugs or consume too much alcohol. Fasting is also important in this regard. Holy souls do something to shorten the purgatory of their living relatives. Yes, they can pray a lot for them. I was told that this happens frequently. What is the fate of stillborn or aborted children? Where do they go? The holy souls tell me that they do not go to heaven or to purgatory because they are innocent. They go to an intermediate place which can be called limbo or even the children's paradise. The word limbo comes from limbus, which means the space between the text and the edge of the paper, meaning margin. The souls of the little ones do not know that there is something better. They do not know that they are not in heaven. The responsibility to bring them to heaven rests on us, a task that is not difficult because they never had the opportunity to sin. We can do this by baptizing the unborn or having a requiem mass celebrated for them. They should receive a name and be welcomed into their family. In this way, they become part of the book of life. I knew a nurse who worked in a hospital in Vienna, and she never missed the chance to baptize stillborn or aborted babies in her ward. She did this twice a day in the morning for those who died during the night, and at night for those who died during the day. And when she herself was about to die, she exclaimed, Oh, here are all my babies, the priest by her bedside replied. Of course, you baptized many of them, and now all of them have come to help you. And then these children accompanied her in her passing. Do the children in limbo appear to the living or remain very close to their living relatives? Yes, the siblings feel the presence of another child near them, even if they know nothing about the stillborn or aborted sibling. I have heard that some highly sensitive children have seen their stillborn or aborted siblings several times. However, when they see them, they also see them grow and age over time at the same pace as those who are alive. Does this contradict your statement that the souls, when they appear, always show the age they had when they died? No, I do not think this contradicts my statement because God knows us better than anyone and shows things in the way that is most understandable for each of us. So when these children manifest as little people who grow, it simply means that God wants to be as clear as possible for those very sensitive and loving children who are exactly visiting them. Children pray much more easily and spontaneously than adults and are more readily believed by their parents. This experience, therefore, will bring immediate results if the enlightened parents intervene and care for all their children in the right way. Jesus himself said, let the children come to me and do not hinder them. And among these children, he includes the stillborn and aborted. What do you think about abortion? Abortion is the worst war and the greatest horror of all time. Satan has been authorized by this sick society to kill the innocents by the millions like flies. Great will be the expiation that humanity will have to make for these crimes. I do not wish to say more. If a woman admits to having had an abortion and recognizes it as a grave sin, what should she do to be sure that everything is forgiven by Jesus? 
Would you answer or should we change the subject? No, do not worry. The woman should immediately confess this sin to a priest and sincerely ask for forgiveness from Jesus. Then she should undergo a deep and sincere penance for this sin so that she can truly find inner peace. She should give a name to her child so that the child feels welcomed and loved in the family to which they specifically belong and so that they can be written in the book of life. She should ask for forgiveness from this child. Finally, she should baptize them and have a mass celebrated for them, as I have already mentioned. If she does all this with a humble and penitent heart, then it will be enough for everything to be forgiven. After doing all this, could there still be lingering effects from the act, aside from the fact that the mother will never forget it? The souls have revealed to me that she will see in heaven the place her child would have had if they had lived the life destined for them, but that place will be empty. Are all abortions punished in the same way? No, because very often young girls are forced by their parents or society to have abortions. In such cases, the greater weight of the guilt will fall on the adults who pressured them into that step. The doctors who profit from it and who lie or remain silent about the well-known negative consequences that will later fall upon the mothers will be severely punished. Pharmaceutical and cosmetic companies that use the byproducts of conception for their drugs or cosmetic lines will realize the enormity of their sin. We must pray a lot for them. Many women in the United States and the West in general say they can do as they please with their bodies and with what is inside them. How would you respond to them? How dare they do to a defenseless being something they would never allow to be done to them and from which, as adults, they have the ability to protect themselves? How they run to the lawyer to sue their neighbor because a branch from their plant has fallen on their perfectly maintained lawn. But when it comes to taking a human life, that is their right and no one should dare interfere in defense of that life. These are truly very poor people who are in urgent need of our daily prayers to be freed from their selfishness, arrogance and confusion. Brothers and sisters, the words you have just read are a profound testimony that reminds us of the sacred value of life and the power of God's mercy. Maria Simmer's revelations guide us on a path of prayer and reflection, calling us to intercede for the souls in purgatory and for those who never had the chance to fully live among us. This is a message that concerns us all, a call to be more aware of the consequences of our actions and to pray for the salvation of every life, even the most fragile and forgotten. Now I invite you to share with us what you think of these revelations. Do you agree? Did they touch your heart? Let us know in the comments. And if you haven't done so yet, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss more testimonies and messages that can enrich your faith and your spiritual life. Let us pray together for the souls and for a more just and merciful world. May the Lord bless us all.